Just now, Man United to take time on Marshall decision. Anthony Marshall's Man United future is currently being carefully thought over by club chiefs, reports suggest. Marshall finds himself down the pecking order up front after the arrival of Rasmus Hoyland. A general lack of fitness has also seen him struggle to maintain form and sequentially a place in the starting 11. Red Devil's bosses are now deciding whether to trigger the 12-month extension inserted into his contract, according to ESPN. The report claims United were allowed to let Marshall leave last summer, but saw the only suitable bid arrive from Saudi Arabia, which Marshall rejected. Meanwhile, Man City have sent the Glazers another reminder of what they've done to Manchester United Manchester City's home ground will host games in Euro 2028 once the stadium has been redeveloped. But Man UTD were unable to guarantee their ground would be up to scratch in five years' time. When European football fans visit Manchester in 2028 for the European Championship, they could stay at the new 400-bed hotel at the Etihad, get a ticket for a game at the stadium, and then head to a concert at the biggest indoor arena in the UK, all on the same site of which City Football Group are the largest stakeholders. By that point, the pound 300 million redevelopment at the Etihad will have been finished for a couple of years, taking the capacity above 60,000, adding the hotel, a new museum, a skywalk, and a large fan zone. The co-op live arena is due to open next year. In the summer of 2028, we can only imagine what state Old Trafford will be in. Maybe it will have been redeveloped, possibly even rebuilt. Perhaps the scaffolding will be up and the cranes in place. Or the roof could still leak, the paint faded, and its status as the second-best stadium in Greater Manchester reaffirmed. The fact we have to imagine the state or otherwise of Old Trafford five years from now is why it won't host games in Euro 2028 while the Etihad will. Work is already underway in upgrading Manchester City's new home. At United, the plans are on pause while the Glazers pontificate over the future of the club. Five years is a long time in football, and maybe the landscape will look different in 2028. Perhaps neither Pep Guardiola nor the Glazers will be involved in football in Manchester. But right now, Old Trafford and the Etihad sum up clubs heading in opposite directions. Again and again. It's already confirmed that Jaden Sancho has no relationship with Eric Ten Hag and barely speaking to Man United boss. So Jaden Sancho is ready to leave Manchester United, with his relationship with boss Eric Ten Hag having fallen apart. Sancho has been exiled from United's first team squad after accusing Ten Hag of not telling the truth about his absence from the team that lost to Arsenal. The Dutchman had claimed it was due to poor training performances from Sancho. But the winger released a fiery statement after the final whistle hitting out at the United boss. In response, Sancho has been banished, with Ten Hag refusing to bring him back into the squad until he has apologized, something the Englishman has proven unwilling to do. Now it appears their relationship has completely fallen apart, with iNews reporting the duo have barely spoken since the Arsenal game. It is said there is now no relationship between Sancho and Ten Hag. With no hint that Ten Hag will back down, Sancho is willing to consider an exit from Old Trafford in January. The winger would prefer a loan move so he can reevaluate his position as he has not yet given up on his United career. The Red Devils would also prefer a temporary exit in January, though more so that everyone moves on quickly. With United regaining some of their spirits in Sancho's absence, there are increasing doubts over whether the relationship between him and Ten Hag can ever be repaired. Ten Hag is said to have demanded that Sancho apologize in front of the whole squad, which the attacker is not willing to do. The Englishman also feels that Ten Hag has his favorites, giving them more of a chance in his team. But with the Dutchman retaining the backing of United's hierarchy, he is even less likely to back down now. And in recent weeks, he has further reiterated his stance over the possibility of Sancho returning. He said before Saturday's win over Brentford, nothing has changed. He, Sancho, isn't available, so I have no comment on that. If he was available, then we would report it. Ten Hag previously commented before last month's defeat to Brighton. He is not available, so he can't contribute to our performance and our result, so I block it. I am always honest. You have to keep things inside the club, but you can't. Have your say. Should Jaden Sancho apologize to Eric Ten Hag? So tell us how you understand this SAG comment section below. Again and again. New VAR rules proposed. 
The FA is pushing to allow VAR communications to be broadcast in stadiums. Wembley bosses feel that letting fans in grounds and at home to hear what VARs are saying to referees will give more clarity to supporters. It was only three days after Liverpool's Luis Diaz's goal at Spurs was wrongly disallowed by a major VR blunder that the chaos surrounding Darren England's mistake was aired. Current international FA board rules mean it is forbidden to broadcast the conversations live. But FA Chief Executive Mark Bullingham will urge a rethink and change of policy at head month's EFAB business meeting, which will set the agenda for the formal law-deciding AGM in March. On the other side, Jose Mourinho proved right on David De Gea's Man United strength that Eric Ten Hag needs. Despite Manchester United's dramatic late win over Brentford on Saturday, keeper Andre Onana has come under more pressure after his first-half error led to a goal. Jose Mourinho likes nothing more than to let the world know he was right about something. And now the former Manchester United manager's assessment of David De Gea might just be haunting Eric Ten Hag. After 11 years at Old Trafford, De Gea was released in the summer and is still without a club. In his place, Ten Hag brought in Andre Onana for £38.3 million from Ajax, but the Cameroon international has struggled to adapt to life in England. Having arrived with a reputation of a ball-playing keeper capable of passing out from the back, Onana was a much-hailed signing after helping Inter Milan to the Champions League final last season. Indeed, his perceived strengths mirrored what De Gea, who kept more top-flight clean sheets than any other top-flight keeper in the 2022-23 campaign, was often criticized for lacking. However, it's been a nightmare start to life in England for Onana, amid a string of high-profile errors. And after a faltering display in the defeat to Galatasaray last Tuesday, his weak hand to Matthias Jensen's strike allowed Brentford to lead on Saturday, before Scott McTominay's late show rescued matters. And amid concerns over his shot-stopping ability, Mourinho's assessment of the ex-Spanish international back in 2020 seems increasingly relevant. Is he good? Yes, he's very good. David is much better on the line than coming out, he said. I think in goal, his agility and technical level is second to none, again and again. Anthony Marshall rejected the chance to enter talks with a Saudi Pro League club this summer, according to ESPN. Man United were willing to let the Frenchman leave before deadline day. Club officials are now keeping their options open regarding his future, with much depending on how he performs between now and the end of the season. Meanwhile, Maguire breaks silence on Mum's abuse fears. Harry Maguire has told his mum not to worry about him, because he can handle the abuse he gets. And the Manchester United defender also thanked former England captain David Beckham for ringing to support him. Maguire was mercilessly mocked by fans after an own goal in England's 3-1 Hampton Park win over Scotland last month. His mother Zoe took to Instagram to slam the abuse her son had received from some supporters and pundits as disgraceful and totally unacceptable. Reflecting on the incident, Maguire, 30, said, She was in the stands during the Scotland game and probably felt affected by it and annoyed by it. She's more worried for me, but I did reiterate to her that I am all good and strong mentally and I can deal with it. It probably affects my family more than myself as they worry how I'm dealing with it. I just tell her all the time that I'm good.